Let's say for the sake of argument, you're taking a history class and you've got to write a paper in which you cite your sources. Perhaps you're familiar with parenthetical citation formats like MLA or something like that. That's fine. You know that you need to document where your evidence is coming from. But now you've got this history professor, and he's saying you have to use Chicago-style footnotes. How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. Like, what is that? You've never used it before. You're flummoxed. I'm so confused. Fear not. I'm Dr. Doug Campbell, and we're here to talk about footnotes, what they are, why you use them, and how to use them correctly. Where is Gamora? Yeah, I'll do you one better. Who's Gamora? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? So let's do it. The standard format for the history discipline is defined by the University of Chicago Press's Manual for Writers of Research Papers, Theses, and Dissertations also sometimes called Turabian format, after Kate Turabian, the original author of this manual. So Chicago, Turabian, all those labels refer to the same basic format of citing sources, which is to say, one that uses footnotes. You may well ask why you have to learn yet another format to cite sources, especially when you're already familiar with MLA or APA style parenthetical citations used by the disciplines of literature and psychology respectively? Well, I mean, good question. I'm sure we all wish that the disciplines could get their heads together and decide on one unified method of citation so that students only had to learn one. I'm sure we all wish that's the way the world could work. I wish I could control my powers. Yes, and I wish I could walk. Is, is wish time? How long does this go? Are we done with the Aladdin just found the genie moment? Because wishes don't come true. I mean, it, it is what it is. Get used to disappointment. Okay. So the basic concept behind a footnote is pretty simple. Anytime you refer to or quote a piece of information or an idea from another source in your writing, you have to cite it. You do this by inserting a superscript numeral in your text, which corresponds to a source listed at the bottom of the same page. Hence the name, since the citation appears at the foot of the page. I suppose it's worth noting that technically for Chicago style citations, endnotes can also be used and those put the citations at the end of your paper. Really though, that's a giant pain in the butt. I mean, who wants to have to flip back and forth to the end of a paper just to see where the evidence is coming from every minute or two? You know, footnotes are much more convenient for readers since all they have to do is look down. So use footnotes. They're better. One advantage that footnotes also have over parenthetical citations is that they allow room to include the entire bibliographic citation for a source without totally breaking up the flow of your writing. So that's what you should do. The first time you refer to a source, you should include the full bibliographic information for that source including, among other things, the author's name, the publication info, the date published, the page, or the web address and date accessed if it's an online source. Once you cited the full bibliographic information for a source once, you can assume that your reader, not being a total idiot, is familiar with that citation. Any subsequent reference to that source, you simply need to cite the author's name and the page number if one is available. Also, if you use a footnote for a particular source, and then your next footnote refers to that same source, you can just include the abbreviation IBID, which shortens the Latin term IBIDEM, meaning in the same place, if you like. You know, if you want to be fancy and stuff. Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. Some other things to keep in mind. Footnotes are numbered consecutively, starting at number one and increasing in value with each subsequent note. You don't have to start renumbering with each new page, and you don't use the same number repeatedly for the same source. Just keep counting up from one, and you're doing things correctly. 
Footnotes are usually presented in the same font and size as the rest of your paper. That said, your footnote should always be single-spaced, even if the rest of your paper is double-spaced. If you have a bunch of references to a source or sources in a single paragraph, it's perfectly acceptable to combine them all in one footnote at the end of the paragraph if that seems convenient. Certainly, that is often preferable to having a footnote for every single sentence. In general, however, you should be trying to make it as clear as possible to your readers specifically where your information comes from. Also, please note footnotes do not take the place of a bibliography. You still need a separate bibliography or works cited page at the end of your paper, which lists all of your sources alphabetically by author. To get the precise formatting guidelines for a variety of different types of sources, from books to journal articles to newspapers to videos to websites, etc., you want to go and check out the Chicago Manual of Styles website. They do also still put out their standards in a published book if you really want to kick things old school. How very traditional. Well, I like to do some things the old-fashioned way. Sometimes the old ways are the best. There are also a number of free citation generators out there which can automatically format your citations according to whatever style you specify. I won't name any specifically because they change frequently, and I don't want to be seen as endorsing any of them. Unless they pay me, all of them are perfectly fine. As with any skill, however, it is worth familiarizing yourself with how to format your footnotes the old-fashioned way before using any shortcuts. And if you're wondering if all of this is just simply not worth the trouble, and you should ignore your professor's instructions, and just go ahead and use MLA or APA style parenthetical citations? Well, the answer to that is no, 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 no. Just don't, don't. Okay, so let's quickly walk through the process of how to insert a footnote just so you can see it for yourself. So we're gonna be demonstrating how to insert footnotes using LibreOffice, which is a free, online word processing platform. We've got here an essay on ideological responses to the French Revolution, particularly those of Edmund Burke and Thomas Paine, and I want to put my footnotes in. I've got a quote down here from Burke's book, so what we do is we put the cursor down here at the quotation, we go up to insert, scroll down to footnote and endnote, we want to put a footnote in, you see, bam, that puts us down to the bottom of the page. Just insert the bibliographic information. In this instance, we've got ourselves Edmund Burke, excerpts from Reflections on the Revolution in France, the date accessed, the URL for this particular source, which does also come with page numbers, so I've included that. Okay, so our next quotation also needs a footnote, and that's from exactly the same source. So once again, I'm going to insert a footnote. It's down at the bottom of the page. Note this is footnote number two. They do number consecutively. It's the same source, so I've already cited it once. I don't need the full bibliographic information. So I could just put Burke, page 45. Or if I want to be fancy, I could use the Latin ibid, since we just now cited this source. And finally, one other footnote for this paragraph down here, which includes some references to both a scholarly journal article as well as Thomas Paine's Age of Reason. So we're going to just, since there's a bunch of references at the end of that paragraph, we're going to insert once more. Um, oh, where is it? Our footnote. Include the bibliographic information both for Paine uh, and then for an article by Isaac Kramnik, so you can see you can include more than one source. And that's footnote number three. If we were to continue to do this, we would continue numbering footnote number four, footnote number five, footnote number six, etc. I trust you get the idea. See? Very easy. You might also note that your mileage may vary according to various other word processing packages. Like, I'm not going to walk you through every single one. Just note that they all have some way of inserting footnotes. You just might have to do a search in the help function to see precisely how to do it. So there you go. That's how you use footnotes. See, it's not so scary. It's just going to be another tool in your academic toolbox. So go forth and cite your sources. 
That's all I got for you. See you later. Good luck.